Hi, everyone. Thank you for watching this training on voter registration. My name is Christy Boer, she, her, hers, and I'm the training director for the North Carolina Democratic Party. A quick note about this computer-based training. Because this is recorded, you can go at your own pace. I encourage you to follow along with the, uh, in this case, the website. There will come a point where I talk about a particular website. You might want to pause and go to the website to try it out yourself. And then you can reach out if you have any questions or need clarification. This is my information. My email is kboer at ncdp.org. You can take a screenshot or a picture of this graphic if you need it. So for this session on voter registration, my goal is for all North Carolina Democrats to have the tools and information they need to engage in successful voter registration efforts. Whether you are a volunteer who's participating to register voters, or if you are organizing a voter registration event. Thank you for being here. There are three sections in this training. One is why registering voters is so incredibly important. The second section is specifically about the process of registering voters in North Carolina. And then the third section is how to host a successful event. I've drawn an orange line here between sections two and three. If you are organizing a voter registration event, please watch through till the end. If you are attending a voter registration event and not planning on hosting and you want to stop the video after the second section, I will let you know when that time comes. So let's jump into why registering voters matters. We know that when Democrats vote, when Democrats turn out, Democrats win. We also know that our opponents are taking a lot of efforts uh, to keep people from voting. In particular in North Carolina in 2024, the Republicans are really trying to make same day registration very difficult. So by registering as many people as possible, as early as possible, we're really setting ourselves up for success in November and in future elections. We also want to make sure that we are registering voters at their current address. And a lot of the problems that we see and challenges we see on election day, which in North Carolina, you can't register on the final election day, a lot of those issues would be prevented if the voter was actually voted registered at their current address. So those are a couple of important points. And we know that voter registration is voter protection. The Republicans want to keep people from voting and they keep making it harder and harder. So our job is to work hard to get people registered. One reason this is so important is that studies have shown if someone, once someone has voted, three times, they're pretty much a voter for life. It builds a habit. So getting people registered now will help us in November and help us in future years. I'm gonna talk now about the specifics involved in registering voters in North Carolina. First, this is an interactive part. So how do you check your registration? I really recommend that you check your registration because it will, first of all, ensure that you are registered to vote and at your current address. And also it will help you better explain this process as you are talking to other voters and helping them through it. So once you tried this out, it will be easier to explain to others. The website, to check your voter registration or to help someone else check theirs is IWillVote.com. When you get to that website, you can click on check if I'm registered to vote and it will walk you through the process. So this is a point where you might want to pause this video and open another screen or uh, get out another device and go to I Will Vote and actually check your voter registration. Couple of notes here. Um, if you or someone has recently registered, it might take a few days for the website to be updated. 
If it's been more than a few days, then you should recommend that the person you're talking to reach out to the County Board of Elections to make sure there weren't any issues with their registration. So who can register to vote in North Carolina? You can probably register to vote as long as you are a US citizen. You will be 18 years old or older by the time of the next general election and you have lived in your county for at least 30 days before the election. You see, there's a note here that if someone is 16, they won't be 18 by uh, the, the next general election, but as long as they're at least 16, they can get pre-registered so that once they hit 18, they are prepared to start voting. Someone cannot register if they are currently serving a sentence for a felony conviction, including if they are on probation, parole, or any type of post-release supervision. However, uh, they can register to vote if they've completed all parts of their sentence for a felony conviction or if they've been pardoned. So if somebody previously um, was serving a sentence, but the whole sentence is over now, they can register to vote. One more note about that is that someone may be eligible to register to vote if the only aspect of their felony sentence that's left is a financial debt, some kind of fine restitution fees. Um, so if, if their period of felony supervision is over, they regain voting rights, even if they, they still have debts related to their sentence. What does someone need to register? So you can see here a list of four items. You need to have one of these four, a North Carolina driver's license or a state ID number or the last four digits of a social security number. And if someone doesn't have a driver's license, doesn't have a state ID, doesn't have a social security number, there is a box on the form they can check. So um, particularly for some of our older residents, they might've been born in a time where um, social security numbers weren't given out the way that they are today. So there is a box that can be checked. Another important point here is that people should register to vote at the residence where they live. So if they have a PO box or maybe they're a student and they use a student union mailbox, um, register at the location where they live. If their mailing address is different, there is a separate place where they can put that information. This is what the voter registration form looks like in 2024. So I don't expect you to read all this and memorize it. What's important to know is that each of the red sections is a required section. The gray sections are optional. We really want to encourage people to fill them out. So it includes things like putting in your email address or phone number. That's not required to register, but if you have that information in there and there's any problem with the registration, there's a way for them to be contacted. And then at the bottom of the form, there's another red section here where the signature and date are required. So when you're talking to voters and potential voters, one thing I want to point out first is that North Carolina is a very diverse state and we know that um, things that work in the cities might not work the same in rural areas. So I'm gonna share some best practices, knowing that you can adapt it in your area as, as you need to, you know your community better than I do, uh, but I will share a few best practices here. So when you're thinking about where to host a re voter registration event, uh, think about the kinds of people that you're trying to register to vote. So we are trying to register Democrats to vote. Meanwhile, anyone who asks for a voter registration form, you will give it to them. So try to hang out or host your event in places where you expect there to be a lot more Democrats than Republicans. So if you're in a particularly uh, rural, red-heavy area, 
Um, you might not want to stand in front of the grocery store because it, it might not be getting you a lot of Democratic voters. You might want to try a few other tactics, and I'll share some more information on that in a few slides. So no matter what party affiliation someone is, if they um, ask for a voter registration form, if they fill it out and give it to you, no matter what, you must turn that in. You must turn in all voter registration forms. So getting into the mindset of registering voters, what you're doing when you're doing this work is really powerful and very important. Our vote is our voice. So you're providing a service to the community by making it easy and convenient for people to register to vote. Good idea to have voter registration forms with you, maybe in your car, in your backpack, have them with you at all times and look for opportunities to register people. Be enthusiastic, energetic, positive when you act, interact with people. Uh, your body language will go a long way in um, being friendly and welcoming for people. If you're hosting an event, have some fun with it. Make it a theme event. Um, plan something fun for your volunteers who are participating in the voter registration efforts and just think outside the box, whatever you want to do, um, however creative you want to be for your voter registration event, have a little bit of fun. It's important to have some materials with you. So have a lot of forms. It's helpful to have clipboards. So if you're interacting with someone in public, they have a, a sturdy surface to write on, have some pens with you. If you are at an event, you might wanna have multiple clipboards with forms and pens prepped. So if you come across four people in a group and two of them need to register, they could each be filling out the paperwork at the same time. A Couple of tactics as you're asking people about registering to vote. If someone's walking towards you, you can kind of stand a little bit in their path. It's going to um, just give them a momentary disruption and will encourage them to stop and listen to you. If someone's in a hurry, walk alongside with them while you give your voter registration pitch. And if you come across a group, make sure you address your question, your interaction to every member of the group. So just because one person says I'm registered doesn't mean everyone in the group is. Going back to body language, have a good body language as you're interacting with people in the public. Make eye contact, smile, be approachable, be engaging, get that clipboard in their hand. And if you're doing this at um, some kind of tabling event, stand in front of the table, which is more welcoming than standing behind it. You can see in this picture that the volunteer is helping to walk the voter who is registering through each field on the form. When you're making the ask for someone, always ask, are you registered to vote at your current address? If you just ask somebody if they're registered to vote, the answer might be yes, but perhaps they have moved or it's not their current address. So if someone says no, get that clipboard in their hand so they can start filling out the form, walk them through it. Be assumptive and assertive. You are providing a service, a, a community service, helping people engage in our democracy. So you're giving them help, you're doing them a favor. Don't give people an out or assume somebody is not interested or um, not eligible. And this last point I like a lot, which is about being a bit of a social chameleon. This is just good practice for communication and, and persuading voters or uh, registering voters in this case, but match the tone, match the language, kind of match the vibe of the person that you're talking to. If somebody says, I'm already registered to vote, I'm gonna share some follow-up questions with you. And I wanna set a little bit of expectation here. So voter registration events can feel like uh, you only might get a couple of people who need to register in any given event, 
maybe only a couple of people who will go to IWillVote.com and check their registration. But every single one of those voters is very important to us. And if we have dozens of volunteers in every county, every weekend doing that from now until November, those numbers really add up. So if you get one or two people per hour, that's that's a pretty good result. That's great. Those are voters who wouldn't have registered without your help. So we can make each one of those interactions more valuable if we don't stop by just asking if someone's registered to vote or if they tell you they're registered. We talk about this as a waterfall ask. So you've asked, are you registered to vote? Is it at your current address? Have you moved since you last voted? If someone says, it's at, I'm registered, I'm registered at my current event address, I have not moved, great. Let's double check and make sure that uh, all of your details are up to date, which you can also do on iwillvote.com. If someone says, I, I think I'm registered or I'm not sure, let's double check. And that's where you would go to I will vote either on your phone, you can go to IWillVote.com and put the person's information in or have them on their phone or device go to the website and check. Going back to the diversity of our state, if you're in a deep red area, like I said, you might not want to be in front of the library or in front of the grocery store because you might end up registering more Republicans than Democrats, which is not what we're trying to do. This is where you might want to take more of a relational organizing approach. This means focused texting to people who you know, who you think are like-minded. This can be as simple as, hey, I just um, took a training on voter registration and checking my voter registration status. Have you checked yours? Go to IWillVote.com. So I would encourage you to think about the area where you are and where you're registering per people. And if it makes sense to have a very public event where you're interacting with strangers in some of those deep red counties, you might want to take a more focused approach. A quick note about health and safety. If you are scheduled for a volunteer shift, whether it's for voter registration or another event with us, I would encourage you, if you are not feeling well, to skip that particular shift. Uh, we love our volunteers. We hope you'll sign up and come rejoin us as soon as you are well. But we know in addition to COVID, we've got a, illnesses going around and it's just a better idea um, to stay home, rest up, and we'll see you at the next shift. couple of important dates that you might want to know. So the deadline is 25 days before an election is when people need to be registered to vote. For our March primary, that means February 9th. Uh, for November 5th, people will need to be registered 25 days before that. And of course, there is the period of early vote in person where you can same day register. This is the exciting legal part. So some of the requirements here and, and what volunteers should do when at a volunteer um, voter registration event. You can help voters fill out their form if they ask for help. Check the forms after the voter has completed it before they walk away and make sure they have completed each of those red sections completely. Encourage them to fill out the gray sections as well and provide their contact information. Critically, you should submit forms within five days of when you take possession of it. So um, take them to the Board of Elections or mail them in and have them postmarked no later than the registration deadline, but really get that in within five days. And then when you're talking to voters, you can tell them that they will get their voter registration card in about three weeks. It might be sooner, uh, depending on the timing, but uh, they will get notified in the mail. And submit every form that is handed back to you, even if it's incomplete. Hopefully you will have a chance 
to ask that person to finish the form, but don't, in this case, use your judgment about the information on the form. If I fill it out and I say my name is Daffy Duck and you're pretty confident my name is not actually Daffy Duck, turn it in anyhow. This is not where you apply your judgment, send it to the Board of Elections and let them use their judgment. Couple of don'ts. Don't coerce a vo voter to select a party preference. Don't pre-fill any of the forms. So let the voter, the potential voter, fill all of it out themselves. Don't help a voter unless they have asked for it. Don't sign any of these forms for a voter. You can't say that a person has to re-register in order to vote, that's not true. And don't fill in any information on incomplete forms. Don't keep the filled in form for any purpose. You have to turn it in to the Board of Elections. Don't sell forms or harvest the information and sell the information on the forms. And never make um, a note of the voter's signature, their social security number, date of birth, driver's license number, or email address. That is their personal and private information. So if you have other questions, particularly while you're at an event or throughout the election season, you can call the Voter Protection Hotline. I recommend that you take this phone number and store it into your phone, call it North Carolina Voter Protection Hotline or something like that. So if you or anyone you are helping has questions, someone will answer their questions when you call this number. The number is 833-868-3462. So I've talked about why it's so important to register voters. I've shared some information on the requirements in the process and some best practices for interacting with the public as you're trying to register people to vote. This is the final section, and this is specifically for people who are likely to host a voter registration event. So I said at the beginning, I'd let you know that there is a point at which you could drop off if you're not gonna host an event, this is that point. But hopefully you will be hosting voter registration events and we have some tips. So as you prepare for your voter reg event, think about the potential locations where you could hold the event, ask around, do some research online or social media to find events. So this could be the local farmer's market. It could be there's a holiday parade or any type of community event where you think there won't be a lot of people gathering. That could be a good place to have a voter registration event. If you are hosting and organizing voter registration events on a regular basis, it might be helpful to keep track of where you were, what was the turnout, what were the results, so you could get a sense of what are the most uh, bang for your buck kind of places to host an event. Think about when do people have time to register? So, you know, rush hour morning commute, people are in a hurry, but on the weekend, on vacation, people tend to be more relaxed and have a little bit more time. Think about the type of people who might need to update their address, people who move regularly, perhaps students. And again, this point about think about your community. And um, if you're in a public space, are you more likely to register Republicans? Or will you be in a location where you're confident you will be registering more Democrats? When you're preparing and helping your volunteers get ready at a voter registration event, you can give them a, a version of this training that I have delivered. Your volunteers will need clipboards with voter registration forms. If you're doing this regularly or you're planning a big uh, event, you're going to want to request those forms in advance. A tally sheet is a good idea, so you can kind of keep track of how many forms have gone out, how many have come back in, how many people do you register, 
how many people maybe confirm their registration. And this is also an opportunity for you to recruit volunteers to come to more events for your county, for your organization. So having a volunteer sign-up sheet is also a helpful thing to have. You'll want to train your volunteers when they show up for a voter registration shift, particularly if they haven't done it before or haven't done it often. So a proposed agenda that we're sharing here is to have people sign in so you know who has arrived, greet them, do some quick introductions, review the material that's on the, the clipboard for them to use, talk about why it's so important for us to register voters, share the information like I shared on who can register, walk through the registration form, it's fantastic to do a role play and model the conversation that you would have with a potential voter. And leave some room for questions and maybe best practices. I also love to regroup at the end of the shift and ask people how, how their time went and what was the best interaction they had. Setting expectations with your volunteers would include, you know, giving them a, a goal of two or three voter registration forms per shift. I talked earlier about one to two per hour. Most shifts are about two hours. Set a team goal for voter registration forms during the training. And I always recommend making confirmation calls a day or two before an event to let people know that an actual human being is there waiting for them and relying on them to show up. So when you make those confirm calls, you can remind volunteers to wear comfortable shoes, let them know that they will be in the community for two to three hours, dress for the weather, sunscreen, bring water, whatever they need to do to be comfortable and on their feet for a couple of hours. Throughout the shift, it's a good idea to check in with your volunteers, listen to the conversations they're having, and if there are opportunities to give them feedback, you should share that feedback. You can role model how you interact with the public and, and how to make an effective ask. Reiterate and reset expectations as needed so that the volunteer is having a good experience and also staying on track with your goals. And make sure that they're having fun. It can be good to uh, pair somebody up if it's their first time and maybe you have a real rock star who's very good at this, pairing them up so that they can see that role modeling can be very effective. At the end, of each event, debriefing with your volunteers is very important. So make sure they know that their work mattered. You can uh, give a summary of the day's events and activities, report your hopefully fantastic results. You can get the volunteers input on how things went and if there are opportunities for improvement and also reshift them so that they can come to your next voter registration event or maybe come to a phone bank or a canvas, but make sure you're keeping them involved. I wanna reiterate that it's important that the voter registration forms are filled out accurately and as completely as possible. So if a voter fills out a form and they've missed a field and we didn't catch it and give them an opportunity to correct or complete it, that can leave um, a, a, a bad experience for that voter. So they can feel disenfranchised if they think they're registered because we had this interaction with them but in reality, the form wasn't filled out properly and they are not in fact registered. So volunteers should walk through each step of the form, review what they have collected before someone walks away. And then at the end of each shift, you should also check the forms, do a little quality control so that if you notice a certain pattern where one volunteer keeps forgetting a certain field, you can give them some coaching. This is another way with the tally sheet that maybe you can keep track of common um, errors or oversights you're seeing so that you can provide feedback. Think of voter registration as an opportunity for continuous improvement. So it's a learned skill and the more you do it, you will get better at it. 
That's why it's so important to train volunteers, to retrain them, and to provide that coaching and feedback. Um, I mentioned pairing up volunteers based on their experience and skill level, and then also in that debrief, asking for best practices and best experiences. Some legal notes, if you are organizing a voter registration event, do not compensate based on the number of forms collected or submitted. You're not allowed to do that. If you are planning some type of uh, comp compensation, you're gonna wanna seek legal counsel. I can't give you that legal advice. Um, our best advice is to not compensate based on those forms. Um, if you want a compensation program, please talk to a lawyer and this expert. That is not me. So some more legal notes. If you're hosting a voter registration event, it's a good idea to give forms to volunteers in batches. So on your tally sheet, you could say, Christy received forms 20 through 40. Um, so you have an idea of who has which forms. Then you can log which forms were assigned to whom and which ones were completed and returned. Again, send every form you receive to the Board of Elections within five days of when you receive it. And send every form in, even if the answers on the form seem like gibberish um, or seem inaccurate, go ahead and send that in. So that concludes this training lesson on registering voters and hosting a voter registration event. I have my information on the screen again. If you need additional assistance, please email me. My email is kboer at ncdp.org. Also, I have office hours every Friday from 12 to 1 o'clock. And you can go on to mobilize.us, which is the website where all of our events are listed. And you can look for training office hours. And if you have any questions, definitely reach out. Thank you.